Welcome to the news at Commodity TV. It's time for some copper news. Panoro Minerals received the results of an independent preliminary economic assessment, the PEA, of the company's 100% owned Antilla project in Peru. Antilla is a copper molybdenum porphyry nearby Cusco in southern Peru. Some highlights are the pre-tax estimates for the NPV with a 7.5% discount rate of almost 520 million US dollars, an IRR of 34.7% and a payback of only 2.6 years. It is a conventional open pit mine focused on super gene copper sulfides with a heat bleach and solvent extraction electro winning process. It is designed for a throughput of 20,000 tons per day with an operational mine life of 17 years and a low waste to mill feed ratio of 1.38 to 1. The average annual copper production should be 46.3 million pounds as cathodes, with average direct costs called C1 of 1.51 US dollars per pound of payable copper, and an initial project capital of costs of only 250 million US dollars, including contingencies. Latest research from Macquarie Bank gives the company a 12 month target of $1.40 Canadian, compared to today's stock price around 35 cents. As they see the redesigned Antilla improved economics compared to the PEA from 2016. Copper remains for the next several years in a supply deficit due to the rising demand from electro vehicles, which will support well Panoro's project. Copper Mountain is already in production in Canada and will benefit too from rising copper prices as they do already. The board approved a $5 million budget for their new Clon Curry project located in Queensland, Australia, which they got through the merger with Altona Mining last month. The planned work programs will include follow-up drilling on discoveries made in 2017, testing of new targets and supporting works for the active full feasibility study on the proposed Little Eva copper mine, which is compliant with NI43101. This will enhance and support further the already good results Atuna drilled out like 32 meters with almost 1.5% copper and almost 1 gram gold per ton on Companion, or 13 meters with 0.6% copper and 4.2 grams gold per ton on Quambi. Notable are the higher gold ratios compared to deposits included in the mine plan for the Little Eva development. High silver values at Quambi and high cobalt values at Veiled were also recorded, which are nice indicators for future follow-up drills. The company just reported their Q1 2018 results and production is on track with 23.2 million pounds of copper equivalent produced, which resulted in 19.9 million pounds of copper, which is a 10% increase over Q1 2017, 6,070 ounces of gold and almost 78,000 thousand ounces of silver. Copper Mountain is full on track and becomes a mid-tier copper producer by 2020, when the little Eva mine is in addition in production in Australia. Good news from the copper sector and thanks for watching us. Bye bye from Heresau.